Welcome back. Now, the IMF has told the Democratic Republic of Congo that a credible path towards political stability will probably be a condition of any assistance package. IMF Managing Director Christine Lagarde says that balance of payment support would require buy-in from traditional donors whose relations with President Joseph Kabila's government have soared recently. Congo has only enough foreign currency reserves to cover about three weeks of imports, and its franc currency has lost 40% of its value in the past year. But Western donors are reluctant to aid the government of Kabila, who refused to step down when his mandate expired last December. They also accuse government forces of widespread human rights abuse, abuses charges the authorities deny. Lagarde proposed an Article 4 visit by an IMF delegation for the second half of September, but cautioned that any assistance would come with strings attached. And back here in Nigeria, the government plans to establish cashew processing factory in Oyo State, southwest of the country, within the next six months. The Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Aldo Obey, also says efforts are ongoing to revitalize agri universities across the country to boost agri production. Diversifying Nigeria's economy from oil dependency is one of the targets of the Buhari administration and agriculture a viable alternative. In Oyo State, the Minister of Agriculture, Audu Ogwe, on a two-day working visit, says a cashew processing plant will be built and how best to leverage on the viability of Oyo State to the agricultural sector. As cassava here, we will move from just making gari to producing industrial starch, ethanol, cassava syrup, which the breweries are looking for, cassava chips, which the Chinese are looking for, which has been a bit of a problem to export because of transportation costs. We shall deal with that. Unfortunately, most of the share butter from Nigeria is exported raw to the Republic of Benin and processed there. It's the same with cashew nuts. We have to process our own products here, add value to them, and earn the money. Governor Abiola Jimobi was appreciative of the visit and commended the partnership with the Ministry of Agriculture. They are here to provide us with what we call the basic ingredient of survival. With a very long value chain, the highest employer of labor in a developing or let me even say underdeveloped country like Nigeria is agriculture. Nigeria's potential as an agricultural powerhouse is hardly questioned. It's expected that measures such as the cashew processing factory will bring the country closer to that goal. And in Zimbabwe, the loss making Air Zimbabwe is cutting half of its 400 jobs as part of a restructuring plan meant to revive the ailing national carrier. Like most state-owned companies in the Southern African country, Air Zimbabwe has been making losses for years due to mismanagement, high operating costs, old aircraft and equipment. Air Zimbabwe would cut 200 jobs in its fourth round of layoffs in eight years. Air Zimbabwe cut 300 jobs in August 2015, following cuts in 2009 and 2013, but has since rehired some of the workers. President Robert Mugabe's son-in-law, Simba Chikori, has appointed, was appointed Chief Operating Officer last October, drawing accusations of nepotism from the opposition and critics of the government. And digital money transfer service World Remit has partnered with Chinese smartphone maker Huawei to enable the international transfer of money across Huawei's mobile services in Africa. Mobile money services that allow customers to transfer funds using their phones have proved hugely popular in parts of Africa, particularly where people have less access to traditional bank accounts. Safaricom's mobile phone-based financial service M-Pesa in East Africa has already seen success in this market. The partnership will allow London-based World Remit to connect to over 100 million mobile accounts currently using Huawei's platform, which delivers basic banking transactions through its mobile money offerings on smartphones and basic handsets. 
I'm still talking about technology, but now in Ghana, a 19-year-old Ghanaian student, Gabriel Opari, has built an online video search engine known as Modclu, and the innovation has caught the attention of some of the industry's big tech companies, while some critics are calling it the Africa YouTube. Let's watch this. Ghanaian University student Gabriel Opari wanted to build a search engine that could challenge the dominance of Google. The 19-year-old taught himself how to code by taking online courses in his free time. He's currently a full-time student of sociology at the University of Ghana in Accra. On his quest to rival Google, the world's most popular search engine, Opari developed Modclo, a free search engine for videos. Modclo discovers and streams videos from different locations on the internet all in one place. It is a legitimate point to say that YouTube is a video hosting website. There are lots of videos there. And Matlo is also a, uh, there are a lot of videos on Matlo as well, but they are two different entities. So while YouTube is a video hosting website, Matlo combines the power of YouTube and two other video hosting websites in order to create Matlo. Matlo's users' most popular searches include adverts, music videos, and amateur content. Opari says it's been a learning process since it began in 2015. It says his initial inspiration came from other Ghanaians restless and eager to build businesses at a young age on a continent where opportunities are limited and unemployment is rife. When I was in senior high school, I was surrounded by, a, or I fell into the company of um, students who were very entrepreneurial in nature. Um, it, it was very inspiring considering the fact that most of them were underage, but uh, despite their utter lack of funding, many of them really strive to create businesses. I met students who created um, ushering organizations, uh, clothing lines, fashion groups, and uh, I guess that idea really caught on with me. Opiris says Modclo is only the beginning. He's also working on an advertising network and is building a talent pool around him so that he has the right team to take his dream forward. And finally, still in Ghana, the annual consumer price inflation fell to 12.1% in June from 12.6% the previous month. The major commodity exporter is aiming to narrow inflation to 11.2% by the end of the year as part of a drive to restore macroeconomic stability under a three-year assistance program with the International Monetary Fund. And with that, we Call it a day on today's edition of the program. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Chimizio Zuluwabu.